Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Dive Into Diet. I'm with the star of the show, Lucas Schmidt. What's going on, man? Uh, thinking about mushrooms today. Thinking about mushrooms. I'm sure a lot of you out there watching are thinking about mushrooms. Yep. Just They're- on everybody's mind, I'm sure. <laughs> It's such a, you know, it's one of those topics that, especially in our, you know, little health and wellness world, yeah, uh, you hear a lot about it, but yeah, might not they're... know, you know, exactly what you're getting into. Yeah, I, I mean, I think mushrooms are fairly popular now, um, mainstream in the, in the within the health, right, right, mainstream like with fanatics, <laughs> but it's not commonly, you know, we think, oh yeah, I like mushrooms with my steak, you know, grilled mushrooms or cooked mushrooms, but, right. um, and those are probably pretty good for you, but, uh, I'm talking about medicinal mushrooms today, so. So it's actually, it's medicinal mushrooms, not the mushrooms you get with your steak or. Right. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think those are, um, either like portobello or, um, what are they called? Um, yeah, what cremini they? or cre- they're very common. They're, yeah, they're yeah, common. They're common, like the pizza mushroom that yeah. goes on top of your pizza. <laughs> but I'm not talking about those. Um, actually, one of them c- can be a culinary. The other two, I, I wouldn't recommend it. So we'll talk about the first one, which is lion's mane mushroom. Yep. Lion's mane is a culinary mushroom. It is used not in common, like not in a, a typical restaurant, but like a gourmet restaurant might might use them. Okay. Like with their they're monthly special. Okay, it's it's not commonly used. Culinarily, I have cooked a lion's mane. I grew a lion's mane mushroom one time, and I cooked it just to see what it was all about. Not a fan of the flavor myself, but that's because I'm not a fan of shellfish, and it actually tastes like crab. So interesting. And it's, it's well known for that. Okay. So if you're a vegan out there and you don't want to eat a crab, but you still want to taste your crab in your crab cakes or whatever you can buy a lion's mane mushroom it would need to be fresh probably (laughs) and uh, you can make crab cakes with it that's what i did i followed a recipe i thought it was really weird (laughs) the mushroom raw feels like soft meat it's kind of weird it's like fluffy and soft kind of moist like any mushroom they have a lot of water in them and you just tear it like you're shredding chicken I kid, it's the strangest thing. And this is lion's mane? Lion's mane mushroom. Okay. Lion's mane mushroom is, so it goes, it's kind of a pretty looking mushroom when it's growing, and then it's horribly ugly once it starts to go bad. Okay. Um, like, and it happens fairly quickly. It's this soft kind of, like a lion has a mane. Yep. The mushroom has what looks like soft fur hanging. I know that sounds horrifying. Yeah. But it's actually kind of pretty if you see a picture of a lion. Look up a lion's mane mushroom. And it's it's kind of a pretty looking mushroom. Anyway, um, it tastes like crab. So smells like it too. So so lion's mane is actually something you would eat. Because I'm, I'm thinking it's a supplement. You can. It's most commonly a supplement. Okay. So the taste is, is kind of weird. Because I, I would imagine if you've... I've never, I don't, I've never eaten crab. I let someone else taste it. And they said, oh, yeah, it tastes like crab. And that's what it's sort of reported online and in any article you read to taste like. So Okay. Um, but so the, the purpose of taking it medicinally, though, is it's usually taken in powder form or in a capsule, is mostly cognitive improvement. So brain, your brain health. Okay. Um, there, there is one, I wrote it down to make sure, a double, there was a double-blind clinical trial of lion's mane. I'm a fan of that stuff, double-blind. It's like gold standard research stuff. Um, probably a small scale, though, so I'd like there to be more. Um, and uh, the the participants were asked to consume, you know, you have a control group which isn't taking it, maybe taking a placebo, and then you have a group that is taking it. And I don't believe they were aware of what they were taking to sort of nullify the placebo effect that might happen. So they knew they were being studied, but they may not have known why or what. Okay. Um, at the end of a 16-week period, they er- they started and they took. It's a series of tests for cognitive function. Um, it's called the Hasegawa Dementia Scale. It's a rating scale. For, okay. And they take some tests for cognitive um, function. After 16 weeks on Lion's Mane, the the group that was taking it showed some improvement um, in their cognitive abilities, which I think is pretty cool. So, so would you take that kind of in the morning to, to get you, is it help with memory? I, I think it's, some people might say, yeah, take it with your, there's coffee that's laced with it a lot of the time. Yep. Laced. I say laced like it's poisoned. <laughs> uh, it's mixed in there. Um, but I, I, I think with like most medicinal things, it's, be, it's got to build up in your system. Okay. 
So you might see, uh, 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 I've, I've seen some reports of like instantaneous improvement. Like, yeah, I take a hit of lion's mane in the morning and I feel great. I think that might be placebo. I don't know. I'm not sure. I, I usually say safer side is just to assume you can expect results after being on it for a month or two. So Got it needs it. to build up in the system. So um, that's sort of lion's mane. Now, they are studying it as an anti-dementia supplement, but that's not saying you can cure your dementia right now with lion's mane. But that's sort of where they're going with okay. the research on lion's mane. The next mushroom is turkey tail mushroom. Okay. Turkey tail is, is kind of commonly known, but I actually don't think it's the most famous of the medicinal mushrooms. Turkey tail is typically taken for immune function. Um, so turkey tail has what's called beta-glucans, which are uh, immune system boosters in the body when consumed. So there was a cancer clinical trial done. I wrote the name of these cancer drugs down because I'm not an expert on cancer medications and things like that. The The trial used Taxol and Herceptin, um, I believe that's how you pronounce them, which is a, it was for breast cancer. This was a trial done on breast cancer patients. I believe they were stage four, which is interesting, which is terrible. Yeah. They were taking Taxol and Herceptin, but they were also asked to take turkey tail mushrooms, high doses of it every day during their cancer treatment. Um, they noticed that the people on turkey tail recovered from uh, radiotherapy much faster white cell count, immune system function. Which would make sense. Yeah, it helped them weather the treatment better. So okay. without ill effects. Got it. So it increased their chances of survival. So um which is really cool. That's that's no, it's, And this is not a like patented substance. I mean, you harvest turkey tail mushrooms, they probably dry them somehow and grind them up. Put them in a pill. So um, would turkey tail be something you take on a regular basis? You or? can, yeah, to okay. help your immune system. Yeah, that's really interesting. That's the yeah. that's the of the three. That's the one I had not heard of. Yeah, and it's it's surprising. You, yeah, you have a you have clinical research that it was just not common for health fads. It's yeah. just not common. That's why I kind of roll my eyes at a lot of them. Um, so that's really. And, and you might be going, why is this not all over the world? Why is this not? It's because you can't really make money off of turkey tail mushrooms. There's no incentive to for the pharmaceutical industry to sort of push it because they can't patent it and they can't, yeah, they can't make a ton of money. So, so. is it is it like a supplement as well and mm -hmm. so very similar to lion's mane? Oh yeah, it's the same. Yeah, you could. I mean, is there a brand you like? Out of curiosity. Not necessarily. I look for things. What I look for in a turkey tail is, or any mushroom is. Uh, what is in the pill? Are there a lot of fillers? I, I prefer not actually buy them in powder form because it's cheaper. Okay. It's, you buy them bulk. Now you got to mix it in something. It's not going to taste. It tastes very earthy, and I don't mean earthy in a good way. <laughs> <laughs> By itself, there's some brands out there that say it's a coffee substitute. You know, it's like mixtures of mushroom powders. They call it. It's called like mud coffee. Yeah. It does not taste like coffee. It's a lie. It is not a coffee substitute. It's something to drink in the place of coffee that in no way, shape, or form resembles or tastes like coffee. <laughs> so I, I mix it in my coffee so I don't have to taste it. Okay. Because coffee's strong. So the next one is reishi. I'm, That's a common one. I've reishi heard of reishi. and lion's mane are really common. The other one's chaga. We're not talking about it today, but I think those are the three like buzz mushrooms. Um, reishi is also sort of an antioxidant, sort of like an immune, like, like turkey tail, but... Um, They've done some small case studies with reishi, like good quality case studies with people, not in vitro and not in a mouse, okay? So they've noticed benefits in lower urinary tract symptoms for males. So issues where they're having to pee too often. Yeah. Um, and they had mild anti-diabetic effects. Interesting. So we're thinking metabolism, maybe. And this is reishi. Reishi mushroom, yeah. I think reishi is also associated, I didn't bring it up today, well, I'm bringing it up now, but I didn't in my notes, associated with like um, mood improvement. I think it's it's a common mix in like um, calming cocktails, like little supplements that have magnesium and other things that promote calmness. Reishi is kind of mixed in there for anxiety. But I, I think the research might be sketchy on that, dubious. Uh, I'm not saying it's not true. I just can't confirm it here. Um, I was interested in, in clinical benefits associated with urinary tract issues and diabetes. So No, it's super fascinating. And 
would you advise people like if, if they're wanting to kind of maybe start taking mm-hmm. mushrooms, uh, would you suggest starting in, in any particular order? I'm, I'm assuming you don't want, you wouldn't want to do all three. Yeah, you can do all three. It's not going to hurt you again, uh, or not again. I mentioned this in previous podcasts. Sorry. Um, that's why I said again, but any plant compound, mm. you taking massive doses of it, you can have some gas or some you know, digestive irritation, but, um, no, you can mix them. You can you can have them all. In fact, a lot of companies mix their mushrooms. Oh, okay. So you'll buy, you have to take more capsules, mind you, because each dose is smaller. There's only room in capsule for a certain amount. But um, you could buy in bulk powders and then mix your powders together. I prefer to know how much of each I'm taking, so I'm going to you know mix it all into my coffee things like that got it but you can take them all so too. you're you're putting it in your in your coffee when i take them yeah okay mm-hmm. super interesting yeah so those are the three um i brought up today there's more there's a whole spectrum of mushrooms there's a really rare mushroom i'd like to talk about in another podcast called agaricon but we won't go into the details today you'll have to stay tuned you'll have to one. you'll have to stay tuned but hopefully we piqued your interest into mushrooms if you're just starting down that journey uh what we'll do is we'll probably do another more in-depth yeah. uh, episode on some individual mushrooms but those three definitely check those out lucas man thank you thank you i had no idea about turkey tail yeah it's super cool, cool. Super cool. Well, guys, thank you all for hanging out with us on Dive Into Diet. I'm your host, Ben Rogers. I'm with the star of the show, Lucas Schmidt. Thank you all for being here. We'll see you all next time. Don't go away.